Hi guys! So, just wanted to do a little bit of a chatty vlog, maybe a chai vlog or something. Um, just kind of catching you guys up on what's going on in our world. Um, the one big thing is my whiplash, knock on wood, is feel well, knock on wood actually, um, is feeling much, much better. It's two weeks now. Um, and it seems to be pretty manageable, um, with just Tylenol, like extra, a couple extra strength Tylenol. Um, I can actually turn my head. See, look at that. I can turn my head that way. I've always been able to turn it that way, but this way I usually needed to turn my shoulders too. Um, so that's kind of good. I'm, I'm liking that. I'm hoping it will just continue getting even better. Um, but I did when I had my classes on Wednesday and Thursday night this week, I found sitting in class for three hours, well, two and a half, I think it was, yeah, two and a half, um, was a bit much. I mean, they're obviously not ergonomic chairs or anything like that. So I did have to take the naproxen that I had been um, prescribed during those times. Like I, I figured out if I take them before class, then it's a bit more manageable. Um, gotta say, love naproxen. <laughs> I don't know if anybody's ever been on it before. Um, I don't like taking really, really strong meds. Um, but for the whiplash, I definitely needed it. So whoever invented naproxen, whoever created it, whatever, thank you. <laughs> um, and I'm going to be kind of girly for a second here. Um, so I got to steal take was given I don't know whatever you want to call it my boyfriend's sweater um so you know it's he's he's like why do you want it it's all ratty and old and everything look you know like all the the cuffs are all ratty whatever I don't care you know and you know it's it's big it's it's like way too big on me all this kind of stuff like goes down almost past my bum but you know it's a great boyfriend sweater and he wear it, he was, or used to wear it often, um, but it got, as you can see, too ratty um, and everything for him to wear it kind of every day. And every once in a while when he would wear it, I'm like, you know, I'm looking forward to when you don't want that shirt anymore. So we bought a few uh, new shirts for him or new to us. It was thrifted um, this past week. And... Look, I got a nice, big, oversized boyfriend sweater. Yay! It's such a girly thing. I know. Um, I even, like, tried to say how excited I was with my daughter, and she's like, you're crazy. Um, but eventually she will understand. And I think the big deal for me is because it is so big on me. Like, look at where the shoulders come to, right? <laughs> like... It's awesome. Um, you know, I'm a big girl. I'm five foot ten. You know, I'm not a size two. And um, to be honest, my ex-husband was shorter than I am and was smaller than I am. And um, so it's really nice. Like when I started dating again, I actually had a minimum six foot rule um, because I wanted somebody that was taller than me. And um, my boyfriend's six two and is clearly bigger than I am. And you'd think after five years that I wouldn't get butterflies in my stomach when he like stands really close to me and is, you know, up here. And, but it does, it still does. And I love it. And now I actually get to wear one of his sweaters. That's like totally, he's had it for, you know, 20 years or something. And I just love it. It's freezing out too. So it's nice to kind of cuddle into it. And it's a girl thing, right girls? comment down below. Agree with me, please. <laughs> Maybe others of you have not had this issue, but you know, as a tall girl, it's not often that I get to steal clothing that is, you know, actually big enough for me. So, um, also a third thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about, that's more serious than, you know, girly weird stuff. Um, I actually spent some time on the phone today with police. Um, everything's good. Everything, everybody's fine. But, you know, it is a little nerve-wracking when you see on your phone that you missed a call from the police services. Um, and you would automatically think that it has to do with the restraint system for my son in the car. But 
Um, I don't have all of that set up yet, so I haven't gotten to the stage of needing to go to police services yet. So I was a little confused as to why they were calling me, but thankfully I didn't pick up when I was driving, um, <laughs> which I don't, but you know, you just, if police is calling, if I had seen that it was police calling, I probably would have picked up because it might have been an emergency with my son. Hmm. Anyway, so they were calling to let me know. Um, a few years ago, I actually registered my son um, with the missing persons unit um, because they had an autism specific um, registry. And they also wanted people with loved ones um, who are nonverbal um, to also register. So Alzheimer's patients, um, brain injury, you know, these kind of, of disorders where communication is a big issue. Um, and so I registered my son. It was, it was emotionally very, very difficult. It was before I started my channel. So I don't have any footage for it or anything like that. Um, but it was a pretty easy process. Basically I filled out a form that was actually quite detailed um, and it you know there's like biographical information and contact information and all that but there was great extensive um, portion of it was about my son's likes dislikes um, triggers all this kind of stuff so that if he were to take off and uh, we had to report it to police, like not take off in that, you know, I can just grab him and pull him back or chase him down the street, but take off that, you know, I cannot find him. Um, and I had to contact police. They would have information there because the big one for him was that he used to be absolutely petrified of dogs. So if they were to send a um, police dog after him, that would be a problem, like a huge problem. So, um, and a problem from the standpoint that he would run away even more. Um, so clearly that's a problem. Sorry, my, my, my mouth is a little dry. Um, so anyway, they are actually the, the program itself we were the second city in Ontario to get it here. Um, the pilot project was in Ottawa. Um, and then we got it and it just kind of dispersed from there because it's a fantastic program. So here we actually now, um, Medic Alert has taken over the program. So unfortunately now there's going to be an annual cost. Um, whereas with the missing persons unit, there was not an annual cost. It was just a free service. You register them. Um, however, with the old service, you didn't need to give updated information. Like basically if they physically changed a lot, then you could go and give a new, um, photo or something like that. But otherwise they just had the information on file. Um, so I was going to go again in like five years after we had initially registered him. I think it was like three years ago. Um, to give an updated photo and, you know, that kind of thing every few years. Um, but with Medic Alert, it's apparently a $60 annual fee. And they update the information annually as well. So basically, once you pay the fee, um, they update the information. And it's real-time information when a missing person alert is put out. So, and here in Ontario, it's an Amber Alert. Um, so this is awesome. I absolutely love this information. Like the, under the old system, it was when the coordinator of the program was actually at their desk or on shift is when you could get you, when you could access that information. Whereas from what they described in, for this new one, um, it's real time. So I'm just waiting for that information. And then I'm going to pass that along in my Facebook group that I have um, for all the people that come out to my support group meetings and my presentations and stuff like that so that then they can register their children and, you know, spread the word out that way. Um, apparently they are having um, an information event coming up next month. 
so they're going to send me the information for that and hopefully I can swing things so that I can attend that event as well. Hopefully it's not on a school night, I'm not sure. Anyway, so it's been kind of an interesting day today. Um, and that I'm actually looking really looking forward to it. So I encourage you, um, if you have a child with autism or any special need, and a lot of you guys do, so um, I encourage you to call your local police services and see if they have any kind of a similar registry. Um, and if they don't, ask them if they're going to or if they think they should and stuff like that. Um, I will admit emotionally it was very very difficult for me as his parent to think of this worst case scenario um, and to do the application or not the application form but the registration form and all that because it is a worst case scenario thing but on the other hand it also made me feel so much better that you know, the type of situation that happened two Saturdays ago when I got whiplash. Um, if somebody had the called the police, because, you know, it's very valid for somebody to have that witnessing that situation to have potentially called the police about the situation, um, then they would at least have on file who we are and what the issue is. So... It's difficult from an emotional standpoint, but from a logical standpoint, it makes a lot of sense. So I encourage you to contact your local police department and see if they have a similar program. Um, and if they don't, ask maybe if they need to start one. So I know here in Ontario, there are many, many, many cities now that have the program or have a similar program. Um, so I personally think that it should be everywhere, that it should be standard across the board in any police department anywhere. Um, so many people cannot speak for themselves. Um, so this is one way to help them, right? So anyway, there's my soapbox for the day. Enjoy the rest of your day and happy chai. <laughs> Bye guys.